and uh, because of the fact that I'm on this mind is a terrible thing to waste and so I, I want to talk about it again this morning but I want to deal with another subject matter dealing with the mind and that's meditation and you know this is a short version of what I wanted to share about meditating because people always ask me the question like how do they read the Bible, study the Bible, prepare, you know? So I tell them, you know, you could, you could spend an hour with the Lord every day if you just break it down in 15 minute increments. You could take 15 minutes to read something from the Bible, 15 minutes to study something from that you read from the Bible, 15 minutes to meditate, and 15 minutes to pray. And what's that? That's an hour. That's an hour. 15 minutes. 15 minutes to read, 15 minutes to study, 15 minutes to meditate, because you have to meditate on what you've read and studied, and then 15 minutes to pray about what you've read and studied and meditated on. And you spend an hour with the Lord, and you won't even miss the time. You won't, it won't even be like you spent an hour with the Lord. You'll probably go over if you start doing it like that, because 15 minutes, and I tell you all, that whatever you give God in, in that quality of time, let that be his time. Let that be his 15 minutes, or let that be his half an hour, 30 minutes, or let that be his hour. Let that be his time. And that's your and his time together. And you're not involved with anybody else, and you're not, uh, you know, you're not listening to music, or you're not looking at television, because you cannot read this Bible. You cannot read the Bible and be watching TV and watching your favorite TV show. You can't do it. You can't concentrate. You can't get what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you or when he opens up your mind and illumine, light up your mind so that you can understand what is being said in the text. You can't do it. You can't be sitting and listening to music you know, Fred Hammond or, you know, all these other people, Kirk, uh, Kirk uh, Franklin and all these folks, you can't be sitting listening to that music and you're trying to focus on the scriptures. You can't do it because you're listening to another voice. Plus, not only that, the music is distracting. You don't even know, you know, with some of these people and their music, you don't know whether there's chants in the music because in some music, they are chanting to the devil. And this is even in gospel music. They're chanting, it's new age. And there, there is a soul. I don't even listen to a lot of gospel music. I, I have I have preferred gospel music and songs that I listen to. I listen to a lot of jazz. I'm just being honest with you. I, I listen to jazz music. Jazz music is mostly instrumental and where it does have vocal in it, uh, you know, most of it is love songs or something that's positive or something that's good. It's not all this crazy mess. Uh, I don't listen to a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, uh, folk be singing and doing, uh, you know, because it's just not, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good for me. And so this morning, I want to still focus on the mind is a terrible thing to waste. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. You know, I started last Sunday with that piece and so this morning, I want to go to Joshua. I want to go to Joshua chapter 1. I want to take y'all to the Old Testament. And, and I guarantee I'm going to get you out of here at a good time today because I just want to kind of focus on this piece just a little bit just to see where you are in your thinking because we're dealing with mind is a terrible thing to waste. We're dealing with your thinking and we're dealing with your heart because that's what it's all about. But this is about meditating. This is about what do you think about when you read the scriptures, or when you read anything, how do you think about it? How do you, you know, when you think about philosophy and theory and uh, worldview and stuff like that, what do you think about it? Do you even meditate on that stuff? This political race that's taking place right now, have you sit down to think about the policies, the polity of these two that are running for office for the highest office in the United States, the president's office. Have you 
sit down and listen to their policies and, and the programs and the different stuff they want to do. Have you sat down and listened to both of them? And, and to really kind of think about what they're saying. Or are you just saying because Kamala is a black woman and she would be the first black woman president of the United States, I'm going to vote for her because she's a black woman and she's the first in history to make that move after Obama, first black man to make that move. Are you voting for her because of that? Are you listening to what she's saying? Are you listening to her beliefs, her, her, her theory, her philosophy? She has a philosophy, her politics. Are you listening to her policies? And so, or, you know, same thing with 45. Are you listening to him? Are you listening to what he's saying? And are you thinking about what he's saying uh, as opposed to helping you to make a choice or a decision that will put him in the office as the president? You know, are you listening? Are you, are you paying attention? Are you meditating on, on what's being said? And so I want to read these verses of scripture in here in Joshua chapter 1. Go, come, to, come to the Old Testament with me. Let's go back into the archives of the Bible. These are the writings of Moses, Joshua, the book of Joshua. And so it says, starting here uh, in verse uh, 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. This book of the law. What is the book of the law? So, at this time, it could only be the five writings of Moses, the, you know, from, from Genesis to, to uh, this book. It, it, it could only be the history books, that, that these, oh, these five books that Moses, uh, the Holy Spirit inspired, pinned down was uh, determined as the history books of the Bible. It says, this book of the law, what's the law? The law is nothing but the Ten Commandments. Really, when you break it down, it's just the Ten Commandments. It's nothing else. It's what God said that humanity would live by. It is his standard. It is his principle. It is his truth to give us a guideline. Really, the law is, is, is just telling us that we're sinners. That's what the law is telling us. And... And if you read Paul's writings in the New Testament, especially to the Corinthians, the law is a tutor. And in the book of Galatians, the law is a tutor. It is a teacher. That's what the law is. That's what the books are. That's what the Ten Commandments are. So he says, you shall not depart this from your mouth, or you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Listen to how, uh, you know, in here Joshua is being inspired now, and by Moses, is by saying that if you keep this word and meditate on it, he's just saying, meditate on it. Now, in order to meditate on it, you probably had to sit down and spend some time reading it. You probably had to sit down and spent some time studying. Here he's saying you need to meditate on it. And it says day and night. Now I don't mean, I don't believe he means 24 hours. I do believe he means to get it in your system. I do believe he means that you take some time and spend some quality time with the Lord during the course of the day. And he said these are the things that will happen when you do it. It will make your way prosperous. What's your way prosperous? You, you, your way of living. Your way of living, prosperous. And, and then it will give you good success. And good success is just, it's not necessarily saying you're going to be a millionaire or billionaire, but good success means that if you have faith in God and you trust God and you, if you've learned to surrender to God and depend on God, God will bless you successfully. And he could very well bless you to be a millionaire or a billionaire. But he wants you to, first of all, take this law, take this book of the law, and he wants you to put it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from your mouth. Amen. 
He wants you to be able to speak it. So that means you got to take time to read, study, and meditate. That, that's what that says. And so then he goes on to say, have I not commanded you? And this is a command, by the way. This is a command to do this. This is not something that you have an option in as a born-again believer. As a Christian, you do not have an option. He says in this text, it's right here, verse 9, I have, watch this, I have not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So he's just telling you that this book of the law, God is with you wherever you take it, wherever you go. And so last week I shared some stuff with you that uh, David Paul Tripp wrote. He says, we tend to give ourselves far too much credit. We tend to attribute too much righteousness to ourselves. We tend to think we have more wisdom than we do. And see, here's where meditation comes in. We tend to pride ourselves on having the right character. We tend to think of ourselves as being more patient than we are. We tend to regard ourselves as uh, persistent. We tend to think we are submissive and obedient. We tend to believe we are more committed to the kingdom of God than we are. And we simply tend to see ourselves as more godly than we are. Now, he wrote those things for us to think about. He wrote those things so that we could think about who we are. We could think about how we go about our daily business and we could think about how we treat one another. Do you, you know, do we treat each other like the Bible tells us to treat one another? Do we conduct ourselves and do we behave ourselves as the Bible tells us to? Now, I'm not saying that you won't make mistakes. I'm not saying that you won't fail in some area. I'm not saying that you won't fall short of the glory of God. I would be lying if I said, yeah, I cross every T and dot every I. I'm perfect. I do all that right. I don't do it right like that. I do fall short of his glory. I do fail every day. I do make mistakes all the time. But I thank God that I have a God that I can come to and I can repent sincerely. Here's my thinking. I can repent and ask for forgiveness and I can start clean just like I've never failed, just like I've never made a mistake. That's the God that we serve. Here, he's trying to get us to see that we need to meditate on the Word of God. And if you haven't taken the time to spend with God on a daily basis somewhere along the line, whether it's 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or 45 minutes or whatever, then, you know, I make the difference about your salvation. If you're too busy, and I told the men this over at the men's conference that I did over at Empower Believe yesterday, if you're too busy to spend time with God, to take out some time with God, which he gives you the time, he gives you the time of the day to spend with him, whether you have to get up an extra half an hour early before you go to work, whether you take your lunch break and spend that time with him, or whether you Spend that time with him before you go to bed at night. That's up to you how you designate your time like that. However the Lord lays it upon your heart to spend time with him. But you need to spend some time with him because if you're so busy, and you're always doing something that you can't take out 15 minutes to spend with the Lord. I beg the difference about your salvation again. I wait for the amen to get down. I just beg the difference about you being born again. Because if you're born again, you will make time for God. I wish I had some praying people. You will make the time for if you can, If I can make the time to spend two, three hours with my wife to take her out on a date night, and we just go out and eat, and we're sitting there, and we're bonding, and we're talking to each other, stuff like that. I can't take 15 minutes out of my day to spend with the Lord. I mean, we can talk to each other all the time, anytime. We see each other, you know, when the Lord wakes us up, we see each other, we speak to one another, we ask how each other's doing, stuff like that. But if you can't take out 15 minutes of your time in a 24-hour day period and spend with the Lord, I think the difference about your salvation. Okay. Now I'm talking about meditation, though. Okay. Amen. Talking about meditation. Where does the Word of God belong? It belongs in your mouth. You see in this text where he says, do not let it depart from your mouth.
but you shall meditate on it day and night. It belongs in your mouth. I believe it belongs in your mind. And I believe it belongs in your heart. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, this book of the law refers to the five books of Moses from Genesis through Deuteronomy. But the same command can be expanded to refer to all the books of the scriptures. That means all the Old Testament and all of the New Testament, the whole word of God. You ought to be able to take out some time daily and, and read and study and meditate and pray. And, and that's your reasonable act of worship. That's, that's what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. That is your reasonable, your reasonable act of worship. Because Christ died on the cross for your sins and took your penalty and, and, and removed death from you. He removed, now we're going to die in the physical, but he removed death from you. If you don't think that he did enough at Calvary for you so you could spend at least 15 minutes or whatever time you give to the Lord, I beg the difference about your salvation. I wait for the amen to die down. I can't see you being a born-again believer or a Christian, a believer, and not spending any time with the Lord. That's right. I just can't see it. That's why it's so hard for me to believe people don't want to come to Bible study or they don't want to come to Christian education workshops or they don't want to come to Sunday school, but they want a badge. They want to be leaders. You can't be a leader and lead nothing if you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. I, I'm just me. I, I'm a realist and, and I know better now than to just put somebody up and give them some license or uh, ordain them or whatever. I just know better now. It's going to take a while. A lot of people will probably come to this church because it's already happened. And then if I don't put license in their hand or ordain them, they'll leave. Well, just leave. Amen. Just leave because you can't come here and just get it just like that just because you're a good steward. You, you give. You're very generous in your giving all because you want to come here and participate in something. But you don't want to come to Bible study and learn. You don't want to come to Sunday school and Christian education workshop. How can you spiritually develop and grow if you don't want to do those things? That's just like cheating on a math test. You get somebody else to do your test for you because you haven't taken the time to study or prepare. And you won't cheat. So you'll pay somebody to, to do your math test for you. But well, they don't get you nowhere. They don't get you far in life. Because you're going to get caught in your cheat. I wait for the amen to die down. It's the same thing. The command is that it should not depart from your mouth. You should be able to speak the word of God. Now listen, the only way that you can speak the word of God is that you know the word of God. It deals with your thinking. The only way that you can speak the word of God is that you've taken some time to study and to meditate on the word of God. That's how you start to memorize. You know, uh, people be talking to me all the time like, the word of God just be springing from you. The reason why it springs from me is because for over 30 years, I've been studying this book. For 30 years, I've been reading this book. For over 30 years. I I've been meditating on what it says to me. Not to what I bring to you all on Sunday, but what it says to me yes. for my life. Yes. And I've been praying over this word. I've been praying this word back into my spirit. Because I already know that what God says in Isaiah 55, that when his word go forth, it accomplishes what he called it to do. It does not return to him empty. It does not return to him void. Yes. And so I've learned that. And over the years, it has helped me and it's built me up and it's encouraged me and it's edified me and it's educated me and it's empowered me. In other words, it should be a part of your vocabulary all the time. You should be speaking scripture and all the things that scripture is concerned about, you should be speaking it all the time. We should have a word of encouragement for people that are hurting and that are down all the time. How can you speak to somebody's situation that's going on with them in their minds or hearts? I shared this yesterday with the men at the men's meeting. How do we speak to the hearts and minds of young men, young men, 
if we don't know the word? How do you do it? How do you speak to the hearts and minds of somebody that had just gone through a trauma, just lost a loved one in a tragic way? How do you speak to them? You ought to have a word on your heart yes. to share with somebody. But don't come up there talking about, well, you know the uh, uh, the, you know, the vote, uh, the presidential race is on stupid mess. Be able to share something good with people that's going to encourage them and lift them up and build them up. Have some word in you. Yeah. That's how people will know that you know the Lord. I guess people probably don't even want me to talk about the Lord. Because when you start talking about the Lord around me, I'm going to talk about the Lord. I'm going to let you know what I know about the Lord yeah. and what's in the Bible. And I ain't trying to be in no competition with you to see how much you know. I'm just telling you what I know. Right, I'm waiting for the amen yes. to die down. I'll tell you how good he's been to me. Yes. I'll tell you how faithful he is to me. Yes. I can talk about him all day. Yes. You ought to be able to have something in your mouth that can encourage somebody that's going through right now. Yes. Not just saying the stuff that people want to hear, but say the stuff that they don't want to hear. I wait for the events of that day. Uh huh. How can that happen? How can we? How can we speak this word? How can we speak scripture? And how can we keep it in our mouth? It will happen when you meditate on it day and night. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that for a twenty-four hour period your faith has to be in the Bible. That means that you spend some time with the Lord. Spend enough time with the Lord, and the more time you spend with the Lord, the more you can memorize. It's just like anything else. Y'all can read books, and you can memorize what you read. Y'all can look at Oprah on TV and heard what she said, and you can memorize what she said, and you can bring it back. Well, how about the Word of God? And you can do the same thing. It will happen when you meditate on it day and night. It's a simple principle. If you saturate your mind and your thoughts with the word of God, it will come out in your speech. I wait for the amen to die now. If you saturate your mind and your thoughts with other things, they will come out in your speech as well. That's why the book of Proverbs tells us that as a man think in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. You don't know, that's why I'm lifting this thought. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what he said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. If your heart is full of the word of God, that's what is going to come out of your mouth. Before that happened, you can, you, before that happened, you have to fill your heart with the word. That's why meditation is so important. When you meditate, when you read a verse over and over and contemplate its meaning, it begins to fill your heart. Yeah. Don't try to figure it out. This is a divine book. You can't figure this out. Now, there's other uh, different, uh, I call them tools. I call them uh, divine tools or I call them biblical tools or theological tools that you can use that you can learn how to take and break down words and divide, to define words, biblical dictionaries, lexicons all that old stuff. I know y'all won't be getting into all that old stuff but there's there's books, there's tools there's, there's writings like the daily bread that can help you understand the Bible better that's why I give you all those books that's why I give them to y'all first. Because I got to serve home first before I give it to everybody else. Amen. But if you take the time to go over the daily bread or read a daily bread or read some other kind of devotional book that you have or write, it helps you to understand what you're reading. The Holy Spirit will open up your mind. It's called illumination. He will shine the light. He'll turn on the light bulb in your head. And help you to understand it better. Contemplate. Which means you think about what you read. You think about what you study. You think about. You meditate. You pray. And ask God to help you to understand his word. If y'all think that I know this book. And I only have like a year of theological training. Dallas Theological Seminary. 
uh, which I don't believe really helped me at all. All I think it did was help organize me better. I think it, it gave me a better uh, uh, style or method of organization and technique. But for the year that I was in there, um, the Holy Spirit already had me. He already had me. I was already pastor in the church in Dallas, Texas. I was already pastor. And, and the Lord was growing the church, and we were doing well. And, and, it, and it wasn't because I went to Dallas Theological Seminary. That just kind of helped me organize myself better. Helped me kind of get some things together, structure. I'll put it like that. But, but, but God is the one that will structure you. And he's your foundation. The Word of God is our foundation. He will help us in making sure that we understand the text. Keeping it in this context, not making it say what we want it to say, or not reasoning, and not having, it, not not making it say philosophical things like philosophy and theory and stuff like that. That's 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 not divine. It's not divine. You can you can mix it in there and blend it if you want to, but if you if you take it out of this context, then then you misinterpret it. You're wrong. Before that, before that can happen, and you feel your heart, you have to learn to meditate. When you meditate, when you read a verse, you contemplate, it helps your heart and it helps your mind. It builds you up spiritually. That's why the psalmist say, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies or my meditation. Psalms 119 verses uh, 97 and verse 99. He, you, you hear what David is saying? He says, your law is my meditation all day. I have more understanding than all my teachers. I, all the teachers in seminary, even the elders, even the people who raised us. When you're in the word of God and God gives you divine understanding, he gives you divine wisdom and divine knowledge, he, he surpasses all that teaching. He, he, yeah, I'm not saying it's beneficial and it's good because we need it, but I'm saying he takes you further. He takes you further. That's what, that's what David is saying right here. For your testimonies are my meditations, which is just another word for his word. Testimony, statutes, precepts, commandments. It's just another word for his word. I believe that is why God gave us a book and not a music video. A music video just goes flying by, jumping from one angle to the next, bombarding you with images, and it then it's gone. It's gone. If you meditate on the Bible day and night, it will start you to come out of your, it will start to come out of your mouth. Your speech will be gracious and it will be seasoned with salt. As Paul says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it will be the kind of talk that edifies, building others up rather than tearing them down. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. The purpose of meditating on God's commands is that you may observe to do according to all that is written. Amen. That we will get it in us. And watch this. It will become a part of us. It will become a part of your life. You're not just talking God. And you're not just saying the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then you have no substance to it. No purpose behind it. It becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of your life. It becomes a part of your living. The purpose is not just knowledge and obedience. The purpose is not just knowledge, but obedience. The promise here is that meditation will ultimately produce changed behavior because our hearts will be saturated with the word of God. Did you hear that? You will be changed. That's the promise. You'll be changed. Not that you'll have a form of knowledge. Not just that you'll know more than anybody else know. I don't talk about God and scriptures just because I want folk to know I know the scriptures. I talk to people about God and the scriptures because it's a part of me. It's a part of my life. It's a part of my conversation. He is a part of my conversation. 
I got to talk about him in my conversation. I got to talk about what he's doing in my life, in my conversation. I can't have a conversation with you and not bring up the Lord. I'm waiting for the amen to die down. I can't do it. Because either he's being faithful, either he's being loving, either he's full of grace, either he's full of mercy, either he's providential, either he's sovereign, he's my God. Amen. I can't be talking to you just about everything and anything and not mention him to glory be to God. If I say to glory be to God, I don't mention him. Right. To God be the glory for all the good things that he's done. Yeah. I have to let people know that. It, it's not, you talk, Pastor Willie, you sound like, you just sound like the Bible. That, that ain't got nothing to do with it. That's not why I talk about him. I talk about him because I love him, because yeah. he first loved me. Yeah. Well, how do you know that? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. But I stretched it. I said, you know, I love him because he's always loved me. Yeah. He thought about me way before my mama, my grandmama, my great-grandmama and them were born. He thought about me, he had me on his mind. Yeah. He's always loved me. Yeah. Not just that he first loved me, but I love him just because. He ain't got to give me no reason. Yeah. I love him just because he's God. And beside him, there is no other. Amen. There is no other God to me. He's the only God. So the promise here is that meditation will ultimately produce changed behavior because our hearts will be saturated with the word of God. David asks in Psalms 19, verse 14, he says, let the words of my mouth, there it is, and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He is asking, O oh Lord, please govern and guard the meditation of my heart. Why? It's because that is what is going to show up in my behavior. This is the real prosperity gospel. If you ever wanted to know what the prosperity gospel is, the prosperity gospel is you meditating on the word of God day and night. That it's rich. It's rich. And out of the abundance of your heart, Jesus said in Matthew's, uh, out of the abundance of your heart flows the word of God. So that, so that you can enrich somebody's life. When is the last time that you've actually said something that you believe that impacted somebody's life or made a difference in their life? Or was the conversation just about whatever, which was probably boring? It was probably just boring. Because if you didn't mention him, if you didn't talk about him in there some way, when is the last time you've done it? Where you actually felt good inside that you said something out your mouth about God to somebody that changed their lives, made a difference in their life. When the last time you've done it? When the last time you felt like that? When you felt encouraged because of the fact that you said something that encouraged somebody? When is the last time you've done it? Or y'all just sit around and talk about whatever. P. Diddy, politics. You know, the talk right now is P. Diddy. P. Diddy is all over YouTube. Does that take up more of your time and space in your mind and your heart than God? You can sit around and talk about P. Diddy all you want to. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you ain't praying for that young man, because you ought to be praying for him, right. him and TV fakes and all the people, the, the congressmen and the senators, all them people, Beyonce, Jay-Z, all them folk. You need to be praying for them folk. They ain't just a conversation piece. Yeah. But here's how I talk about them. When I talk about them, I let somebody know I'm praying for their souls. That's right. That God will touch them in such a way because God has given them this platform. He has given them millions of followers. But guess what? Ain't nobody follow them now. Ain't nobody trying to follow them now. See, ain't nobody trying to follow them. See, it's just like some folk here locally at the time when they heard, when they heard about uh, Bishop Evan Long. They said, no, he ain't my bishop. I don't know him. When they found out what he was doing for real. Huh? That's how it is. That's when you know who your friend is. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's when you know that. So when the last time 
you've had a conversation with someone where you thought that it would strike an interest when you talked about the Lord or you said his name or you brought up Jesus or yeah. you asked them, can I pray for you? And you prayed for them and they sit there and they cry and you impacted them somehow. And after you left, after y'all split up, you know, they hugged you and, with conviction because you said something to help them. And the next time you saw them, they probably changed. Something changed about them, their behavior. Well, the word of God, when you meditate on it, it changes your behavior. Amen. I wait for the amen. amen. God, man, that's what it's stressing here. It should be in your mouth. Amen. You should be able to speak it and because it's a part of you and you ought to be able to live it. People ought to be able to see Jesus in you. People ought to be able to say something like, because I get this all the time, there's something about you I don't understand. And then that just brings up Jesus. Then I say, yeah, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Jesus is my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my Master. You know, it just brings up Jesus. It brings up a conversation. Then I can talk about Jesus. That's how, that's how I meet people. Y'all know I meet people all the time. I don't care who they are. I don't meet no strangers, gang members. I meet everybody, spousal abusers. and, and uh, you know, I meet all kinds of folk, and they just pour their hearts out because they'd be like, there's something about you I don't understand. And I say, it's Jesus. That's who it is. That's what you don't understand. It's Jesus. It's the Spirit of God that sent me. And then they pour their lives, they pour their whole lives out before me, you know. And we have a conversation. And at the end of the day, because I don't preach to them, I don't be saying, well, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says so and so and so. I don't say all that. I listen to what they have to say. And as the Spirit leads me to say something, I put it in there. I put it in there. I'm sowing and I'm watering. I'm sowing and I'm watering. I'm sowing seeds and I'm watering. And the Holy Spirit gets to increase. By the time the conversation is over, we done had a good, wonderful conversation. But I had a good time being in each other's presence. They didn't want to get back with me again. Mm -hmm. Then we bonded and then we built a relationship. Next thing you know, I got a new friend. That's, right. That's how I do it, y'all. If y'all want to know how I do it, because it's simple. Mm -hmm. the, the stuff I do is simple. It's not complex. Because I meditate on the Word of God. I have it hit me. It's hidden in my heart. The Bible tells us to take the word of God and hide it in your heart. How do you take the word of God and hide it in your heart? you got to meditate. It has to come from here first. It has to come from your thinking. By the time it reaches your heart, it produces something. It starts to operate. It does something to you. It changes you. It, you you looking forward to change somebody else? No, you ought to be looking forward to change you. All right, y'all. I'm done. Come on, let's stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And so today, I don't know if you know him in the part of your sins or not, but the doors of the church are open. We have to go and celebrate a life taken from us early. We just don't know what the Lord is doing in the scheme of things. But you know, it's a wake-up call. Whenever we lose a loved one, it's a wake-up call because death is a celebration, but it's also a warning. The warning is, is that you're going to do it too. I don't care how old, I don't care how young you are. You're going to do it. You're going to make that trip. Hebrews chapter 9 tells us it's appointed once for man to die and after that the judgment. The preachers aren't talking about the judgment. They're talking about God wants you to be rich. And God wants you to live in a, a mansion. And God wants you to drive fancy cars and wear designs. And God wants you to be in good health. God probably wants all that stuff for us if, if we would just line up with his word and, and follow suit. But that's not for everybody. And, and that theology is heresy. That's wrong theology. Because if God wanted you to be healthy, you'll be healthy. Amen. I don't care how healthy you eat. I don't care how much you exercise. I don't care what. I know people that have left this world that was eating right, eating good. They were exercising. They go to bed at night at a certain time and get proper uh, rest and all that.
proper hygiene and all that, and they left from here. Why? Because when God says it's time for you to go from here, you going up out of here. I don't care how old you are. You leaving this place. And so my thing is, is that we need to just focus on, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. That's what we need to do. We need to be focused on the Lord now because we know that the end times are upon us. We see old Israel right here, but guess what? If you go to Israel right now, it's wrecked. It's wrecked. And it's, it, it don't look nothing like that because it's got skyscrapers and, you know, buildings, nice architect buildings, so it don't look like this no more. But if you go over there right now, it's wrecked. It's wrecked. Babies are being born in war over in Israel every day right now. It's wrecked. And that's a sign. That's a sign. And we need to pay attention. Take heed. So to those of the church open, Father, we love you and bless you. We thank you for this sobering time, how you enrich our minds by letting us know we need to meditate on your word. We need to take the time to read. We need to take the time to study, even if it's a few verses or even if it's a passage, Lord, but we need to take the time to read it, to study it, to meditate on it, to think about it, and then to pray about it, Lord. Help us, help us draw near to you so that you will draw near to us. And so as we depart from this place but not your presence, let your love, let your forgiveness, and let your reconciliation be a part of us until we meet again in the precious name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Let everybody who love him and agree say amen. 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 amen.